Raise your hand if you are for the wall. One of you that raised your hand for the wall, why? Why are you for the wall? Every single year through the southern border, there's like 16,000 kids that are brought through the illegal ports of entry for trafficking purposes, uh, labor and sex slavery, which I think it's a terrible crime that we should all get behind, and also women. So, um, so that is one of the main reasons I'm for the wall. It's going to secure our borders, it's going to prevent people from doing these terrible crimes, and obviously it's national security as well. Anyone that's against the wall, does anyone want to respond? Human trafficking is done right here in Miami. It's done all over the place. A wall didn't start it or won't stop it either. Also, there are people being raped and killed and having the same type of exploitation who are in these ICE detention camps. Uh, children are being killed, and we don't even know what's happening to them. So, I mean, if you're going to build a wall, maybe build it around some other areas. Maybe build it around the White House so that people stop getting killed like that. <laughs> uh, what I will say is the wall is impractical. Number one, there's certain areas in the country where the wall just, like, it's just impractical. I honestly thought the wall was like a metaphor to just tougher immigration policies, which whatever. But they really want a literal wall. It's impractical in some parts of the country. And number two, it's cutting through a lot of reservations. We're talking about Indian land that the government does not own and they want to cut through that land. Those are sovereign nations that they're going to be invalidating just for some wall that, again, is impractical in many other areas of the country. And number three, a wall is not going to stop us. We're going to be migrating here regardless. I, I just want to address the, you know, the whole thing you said about you know, Mex Mexicans being rapists, dr bringing drugs. First of all, this is, this is true. This is a statement of fact. I mean, Mexicans do bring drugs into this country illegally. Mexicans do come in here and commit murders, commit crimes. And I don't think it, it's appropriate to, to paint with a wide brush all Mexicans coming to this country are doing that because my mom crossed the border to this country twice illegally. I have plenty of family who has done that and they've come here and done good things. My mom came here and her first job was at Taco Bell cutting tomatoes and that, that might be funny, but that's true, that's a fact. So, you know, you, you, it's, not a, it's not appropriate for Trump to paint every Mexican coming here as a murderer or a drug dealer. But the fact is, is that a lot of them are. And in my point of view, let's say we let in 50 Me Mexican, uh, Mexicans to this country, 49 of them are good, good working citizens who want to contribute. If, the one, if one of them kills my daughter, I don't want any of them in the country. Speaking of your family that went through, through this very similar process that I'm about to say, a couple of days ago, Donald Trump was in the border. He was there and he said, our country's full, we cannot take you anymore. He wants to right? close and he the was border. Refer he was referring to the hundreds and hundreds of Central American migrants, many of whom are fleeing violence, um, who are here to request asylum. So raise your hand, and actually let's start by you. Do you believe that this specific community of Central American asylum seekers deserve to come into the United States? Well, uh, if you look at the history of asylum, it's based, it's based on religious persecution things of that nature. Now, you know, we're painting asylum with a broader brush where if there's violence in your home country, you, you deserve, yeah, to, you deserve to get asylum. Yes, I know that. So you deserve to get asylum. And well, I don't, I don't know if that, if that should be the case, if we should just accept anyone from, ev from everywhere just because they're escaping a bad situation. I don't think that that automatically grants you asylum. First, Would before, you argue that your mom could be one of those people? I would absolutely argue that my mom, under different circumstances, could have been one of those people. So it is a very touchy situation, me being a Mexican-American, and noting that my mom has become successful, and it is hard, but at the same time, we have a problem already with poverty in this country. We have a problem with veterans who aren't getting the care that they need after, after literally getting blown up for, for the right for us to be here right now and have this discussion. And I think before we start taking in everyone else and their problems, we need to address the problems that we have in this country now. Anyone that wants to respond to him? Go my ahead. issue is that some of these ideals, why they might have some aspects set in reality, it creates a sort of hysteria and it creates a sort of anti-immigrant sentiment where my brother who was born here, people always tell him go back to his country. And the thing about ICE and some of the bills that are going on right now are not just, you know, they're not just deporting criminals. There are mothers, there are families actual families that are being well coming to this country illegally in itself makes you a criminal man. if you, you come to this country you love to cut people, 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 people off okay um there there it is it is separating families is very divisive why why didn't he have such sentiments against his own wives he seems to love immigrants in his bedroom 
So I don't, I don't understand. Not to be vulgar, but I'm saying is uh, just keeping it real. So I've been trying to talk for a while. So like, I, I want to talk about your last comment. Like, oh, Trump said these things. Do you consider this racist? That, that makes racism seem rhetorical, like as if it's a rhetorical device, instead of it being like a systematic issue that's actively destroying lives, like family separation. So like for people to decide, well, is this racist? Just by the sound of it is kind of silly to me in the fact, because the fact that separating a family is racism. Slavery was racism, and it, it worked off NATO slavery. Um, separating these families at the border is, uh, is slavery. And uh, talking about these families that are coming over, why are they coming over? We talked about MS-13, you called them rapists, gangbangers, so on and so on. But those are American gangs. They're created in a very particular form of carceral racism. And they were deported back to these countries, and these and they, they weren't even from there. They were raised here. They developed these types of habits in order to exist within a racialized American economy. Yeah, but they're also in those countries. So, because they got deported there by the U.S., you created that problem. And also, for the she, fact she that... She did? Hmm? I didn't create that problem. She didn't create not that. I'm talking about America. I'm talking about Americans. Right, but if, that's okay. not my problem now. Okay, that's, that's fine. You, you were talking about the American position all day, so I, I created America. I used it as a rhetorical device for the American position that deported these people. Right. So let's talk about the fact that you guys brought up that family separation is racist. I have a big problem when they're using children at the border to get into this country that is not their children. So either there's DNA tests or we're gonna have to separate you to make sure that that child belongs to that parent. But there's this thing called human nature. I feel like, I don't so know, you're, you're okay behind that people, makeup, so you're you okay just like people. lost You just insulted her, of course I you're did. in your feelings. I don't care. Because you're okay. Because you're told me I'm in my feelings. I'm not feeling kind of way. Let's talk about the 11 million documented immigrants that are here. What is the first thing that comes to mind when I say that? Let's go around. I think we should give them citizenship, and that might surprise you guys, but I do think they're, they're already here. They've been here for a while. They're in our schools. They're, they're in our restaurants. They're, you know, they're, they're, every, they're everywhere. They're a part of us. They should be given citizenship. I think I agree with him that a lot of them that have been here, maybe they should get amnesty. I think, you know, they've been here for so long. They're pretty much American by this point, but there are some that they don't represent American values, and they shouldn't be here. What exactly are American values? Uh, murder, Stealing, terrorism, murder. No, I can tell you, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. It's right in our constitution. It's right in our constitution. Respond to that question and then you go. It's right in our constitution. The life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. That is the American dream. I have an American passport. I'm a citizen. I wasn't born here, but I represent these American values. Let's keep going I hear a lot of things, too, like just amnesty, you know, at the snap of a finger. I mean, a lot of them, you know, if they're criminals, I think they got to be deported. A lot of them, you know, their families and... You know, they, they've earned their, their chance at, at becoming citizens. I almost find it disgusting that people are we're really talking about how to legitimize, like, the life of a human being. Thank you. Like, why, be, so they should be given citizen, citizenship because of this, right? I think people should be granted human dignity, period. No matter if you're a Palestinian baby, if you're an American baby, regardless, give them their humanity. There's a report out there that says that it's going to take almost two years to identify the thousands of families that were separated at the border. Who thinks it was immoral to separate families at the border? I am for people, and I feel like the things, the hate, the stereotype, it's affecting real human beings and causing people not to see people as people, but as objects, as this thing with an emotion attached to it. And that level of discrimination is causing families to be separated. People are losing their lives. They're dying. And that is the issue I have with it. Anyone that does not see it immoral, what do you have to say? I mean, okay, you, I just okay. want to say the only reason I don't see it as immoral is just because, like, you or me or any of us here were to commit a crime here in America, we, are, we would be separated from our family. We'd go to jail. Like, it, it's the same thing that would happen to anybody else who committed a crime in America. And, I, and, and crossing the border illegally is committing a crime. I would also like to say that you, civil, there needs to be some sort of... misdemeanor. You can't just assume that these people are families. You need to validate these things. You can't just take it as face, oh, this is your mother? Fine. Because it's been documented that that's not the case, that, that, that the coyotes are using children and as cover, saying that they're their dad for protection. You need to validate these things. You can't just take someone's words and, and take it for face value. And just to play devil's advocate, devil's advocate here, imagine if that was your mother with you, um, but it would, was you feel, mother. would you feel okay if your mother and you were separated? No, I would be sad, absolutely. I, didn't, I never said that separating the families isn't, isn't horrible, because it is horrible, and it is saddening. And, it, and just look but at the images of, of the conditions. That stopped. It is sad, but at the same time, just because something is sad, or just because it's unfortunate, doesn't mean that you can't have, you need to have some sort of way to validate these things. You can't just take someone's words and say, oh, this is my father, okay, good to go. 
the people who are talking about this are unaffected by this. The people that this is happening to are Central American indigenous communities. The, Claudia Gomez was a mom Maya woman, or, or little girl really, who got shot at the border. There are families being celebrated. These are indigenous children. And this is literally replicating the Indian Removal Act. This is this, not only displacing indigenous communities from their pueblos, but also separating them from their families, which is the history of the United States. And this is they're literally a continuing. To come here and do yes, that. they're, they're do, do out of force. Not My, at, back home, I came here. My cousin stayed there, and guess what happened? At 18, he died. That is the reality that we're escaping. And unfortunately, these gangs, these uh, 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 instability of our countries often come from the United States, going to our communities, and trying to start a business there by displacing us. Yeah, you, But that was the past. Th this we're is in the still going on. I we're in the present. Yeah. 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 It's still, like it's it's still going on. I feel like it's, you have more invested yourself in another country than here. You because, care more about another country this than is, here. This is my problem. You know, these are borders. These are man-made borders. I don't care. I care about people. Sally, period. This is, that's just I, I know. The way I know. I know. Like, I know. That's that's the, there's you, a border, border everywhere. everywhere. I, I there's get a it. border you right care. now you in Colombia. In Colombia, you we care. don't want you more. Care. There's a million Look. Venezuelans that are in Colombia. Yes, you care so much about American people. Congratulations. I'm not like that. I'm sorry. I I do think about my community back home. You assimilate to Americanness, well, and that is good. This should be home. This should be home. Unfortunately, you shouldn't keep saying back home. Again, this is coming from. From a the point issue of view, is, is like it's separatism. Literally, like you guys are acting like as if we're not all human. Exactly, yeah. so humanity is being stripped. They're being dehydrated. They're being there's murdered. Let me ask you this: There's a, there's many Venezuelans know that that are coming to Miami and South Florida. In your eyes, is there any difference between some of the Central American families that are at the border and some of the Venezuelans that are trying to come? I mean, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of differences. One of them is the majority of, not the majority, but there's a, a very large ma uh, majority of Venezuelans here who have a lot of money. Some of them are even Chavistas. Some of them are, you know, they, 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 they're kind of like took their money, came here, and they have businesses. Um, so in terms of like humanity, no, they're all humans, but um, the majority of the poor Venezuelans are going to countries like Peru, countries like Colombia, and countries like Brazil. The rich ones are all here. Right, but there, there is, I mean, we do know factually, right, that there are many Venezuelans that are trying to leave the Maduro government and that are trying to seek asylum here. So my question is for everyone, do they deserve the same opportunity to seek asylum than a Central American family yes. right now? I feel everybody yeah. is the same. Everybody has, what people don't understand <laughs> is there is laws and regulations. To, to claim asylum, there's about five different, don't quote me right now, but there's about five different options. Uh, political reasons, if you're being prosecuted for political reasons, I have a friend that uh, claimed asylum that way. Uh, if for race, for, I mean like- Religious like, prosecution, they're legit. persecution. Yeah, exactly. It's not just because your town was affected by some sort of a gang, and now you're poor, and then so you come up. It's not like that. It's like legitimate reasons. You have to verify paperwork to be to claim asylum. When you think of this American dream, right? Oh, God. What type of American dream? It may not exist, and you tell me that. It may not exist, right? But when you do think of this idea of the American dream, what, what does that look like for the Latinx community? In my opinion, the American dream is opportunity. And even though our, I, our country is not perfect, I think there's more opportunity here to succeed than any other country in the world. And I, I mean, think, I can't I argue. Think, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. Sorry. Right. I think that the American dream, what essentially it means is uh, people from the global south coming here and then obtaining the privilege to ignore the United States' involvement in the global south. What does that look like for you? To me, as he said, the dream is opportunity. It is to come here and make money. It is to have my own business. It is to succeed. I don't necessarily think education means success. I have many friends and many people that I know are millionaires and didn't go to school, didn't finish the work, college dropouts. And I, I actually agree with you, and we talked about this earlier, about the pharmaceutical industry and how anti-Big farm I am. And even though we may have our disagreements, most of us just want to reboot in all the establishments. And this means our healthcare, these like pharmaceuticals, it means education, it means everything else. But what I don't want is to give the government Control more power because they're already messing power everything up. People. Yeah. The less, the less government reliance, yeah. the better. Walk into a DMV, see how that's run. Walk into a small business, see how US, that's run. Yeah, you, United States you get Postal government Service. out of the way, I promise you, things will take care of themselves. The, the more the, 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 more the government puts out. their hands in everything, the more things get ruined, okay? The roads will be for destroyed. Me, for me, the biggest issue that has happened with the change of government is how people relate to each other. I think a lot of respect has been lost. And policy aside, which is really important, I think 
I look for a day when people can come together and disagree, but still respect each other. Our country has become so, so, so divided that you can't even sit down with your neighbor. I can't even it's divided. Divided. Like it's, But it's worse, it's worse than ever. No, oh, we just no, are man, no. finally... I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to agree. I'm, I'm trying, I'm the only I'm one raising agree. their hand, go. <laughs> what do you have to say? Okay. What, what, what I will say is, you know, we can, we can agree to disagree depending on the issue, but if I meet someone and they say I want your parents deported, I'm not going to be their friend. I'm not going to be like, oh, I agree to disagree with you. That affects my life personally. I had to drop out of school for two years because of Trump's administration. Would you ever be friends with any of the people that voted for Trump here? Fuck no. I would not. <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You? That's I mean, unfortunate. I meant that That's unfortunate. I think you're a nice person, so that's really unfortunate. Pers that's sad. Personally, that's really sad. Personally speaking, if any of them want to deport my families, if that really is their opinion, then I'm not going to be their friend. Okay, what do you have to say to that? I look at everybody as an individual here, and I base you on your character. A lot of these people have very strong character. I don't judge them off of their political views or how they feel about what they think the world is doing and imperialism, all this stuff. Like, I don't... I don't really, like, I just feel like that's sad that we can't all walk away from here and go to one of these really nice bars here in Wynwood and have a fucking drink. It's not that, it's not that I have any hatred to anyone that, ha that voted for Trump, but to me, it's, it's, again, like, it's affecting people's in their everyday life. So if you have an opinion that I felt like can hurt me, can hurt someone that I love, I'm not gonna sit down and have a casual drink with you. That just doesn't make any sense to me. But I can see the pain that that causes. And... Yeah, because yeah, I'm a people person. I love people but, at the end of the day, I, so. So. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, just this, I think that. this is why we're here, right? Because yeah. if so maybe there is no common ground, maybe there is, but this I is I also this don't want to be here. misunderstood. I don't want people to feel like, you know, anything goes. But I do feel that sometimes it's, it's, it's a communication thing, and you might not understand my point today, but if I could have more conversation with you, if we could build more bridges together, maybe over time you could see my point, or maybe over time you could change your mind, or, or maybe some aspects of me. I'm not so rigid about everything that I think and feel. For those of you that can vote, that have the, the privilege of voting, when you go to the ballot box, what's the most important issue that you're going to be voting on? We're talking about policies and, and politics, right? We get to talk about it in this air-conditioned room. No, oh, this is a privilege. Right, this 100%. is an extreme... People are literally dying right now. Like, that is a fact. People are dying right people now. People die every day. Right? My God, you are exhausting. <laughs> like, like... I mean, people like, die every day. No, is that not true? People die every day. I also don't feel like politics was necessarily ever constructed for the people. I'm talking about the down the, you know, down home grassroots people. It is an elite structure within itself where you elect the leaders of whatever things. So if we look strictly to politicians who are paid to do what they do and shake hands to do what they do, we're going to be completely lost. So will you raise your hand if you're not going to vote in 2020? I'm going to vote. I'm, oh, not, oh, I'm voting. No, everyone plans, everyone that can vote plans on voting. For the ones of you that did vote for Donald Trump in 2016, will you be voting for him again in 2020? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, yeah, yes. The, de the Democrats aren't really producing anybody that would capture my vote. That Why are you going to vote for him? Like my values. I mean, you're talking about, we've been talking about uh, politics and, you know, what, what will stand up to you on a ballot. And, you know, there's been a, this lately... You have politicians like Bernie Sanders, AOC, who want, want to give people, they want to have more government programs. They want to hand out more things. I don't think it's right to keep people dependent on the government. I think that you don't want, the less amount of people dependent on the government for anything is a good thing. That's why overall I'm conservative. That's why we'll be voting for Donald Trump. I want people to be lifted up on their own instead of having to rely on the government for a job, for a place to live, for welfare. Like you want to talk about handouts? Let's talk about these corporate handouts. You are anti-establishment. Really think about what corporate establishments are to the foundation of America. All Relying on the government for, people, for things, the less free they are. If all they're all dependent on the government for something, that gives is, them less liberty, that gives them less choice, that lives them... to give people the right to live, right? That's give people life. the right to live. You're working through college so then you can get a better job, so then you can live a better life. Like, that is life. I had a job That's how you are socially responsible, okay. economically responsible. Like, you have to work shit jobs now and go to college so that you can get a better... Do you think that's okay? Yes, that's how you... Why should we... Okay. Say something and then we're gonna start wrapping it up. Go ahead. 
the United States still has colonies to this day. Puerto Rico, Guam, Virgin Islands, okay? In Puerto Rico, the Borican people there are still under colonialism and every product that goes to Puerto Rico has to touch American soil first and then Puerto Rico. And that affects the people. That means the products there are twice as much, three times as much, et cetera. So when we talk about rights that the United States are, are Americans, what Americans? Because Puerto Ricans are Americans. They're also like 40% like of your population is like on welfare. Yep. Oh, because they're being colonized and constantly. Did you not and they've understand? also never voted to be independent. So why don't they just be independent? Because you, they should just vote. Because the, like, first, they should just have that. Because, strip themselves from the United States. They have had movements for independence. And those people, Oscar Lopez, the longest American political prisoner, was incarcerated for 36 years. These people, people are constantly demanding to be free, and they're constantly being killed and arrested and incarcerated. I'm sorry for cutting you off. We could literally do this for 25 hours. Um, but again, going back to 2020, what are the policies that you want to see give that you're not seeing? Give people a living wage. I'm graduating next year, and my degree is in education. And even as a person coming from the education realm, I do not believe that education is the way out. Give people a living wage. To me, I want to see that. I want that to be huge. Mass incarceration, that shit needs to stop. So we, I mean, where do we, there's so you're much. You're obviously like, not a business what? owner to try to demand what, Living as a wage, business owner, you need to pay. anyone else. What are policies no. that you want to see that are not happening? And just, you can just start. I want to see less government. Less government. government. Limited less government. government. Less government. Less spending on the military. Less, Absolutely. Less spending less, everywhere. Less everywhere. Latinx. No, what, what does it mean to be Latinx? Me or any of my friends who are all Latin have never used this term Latinx before. I really don't like the term. And the interesting thing about it is the only time you become Latin or Latinx is when you're outside of your country, if that makes sense. Because when you are where you are, you are, you are with whatever the, you are where nationality. you are. Yeah. I mean, I identify as an Afro-Latina. To me, I didn't really, I felt separated from, I guess, the Latinx community because I wasn't Latin enough or whatever. Because once I started to identify with my blackness, I didn't know that the two things can be combined. I felt like it had to be separate. I had no choice. Till then, I got an education, figured out these things, you know, called the truth, um, and realized that it, you know, that it's both inclusive. So, I mean, I understand why they chose Latinx because, you know, people don't like to be called Spanish because it's from the Spanish conquistadors and all that stuff. But I identify personally as an Afro-Latina, not so much Latinx. I didn't even know that word existed until now. I don't even think it's a word at all. I feel like it's a way for people to kind of, you know, not offend. I mean, I might not know the exact origin, but I feel like it's a way for people to not use the gender pronouns in Spanish. Like, oh, you can't say Latino or Latina because we don't really know who they are. You know, we don't know how they identify themselves. And I mean, we've been using, you know, Hispanic people have been using that word for centuries, such a long time. And for all of a sudden, you know, have somebody tell me how I can talk or change the way for me to talk. It's, you know, it can be a little insulting. Latino, Hispanic, whatever these words, they were given to us by different people. Those words, actually, we didn't use for centuries. I don't know where they got that information. It's relatively new terms. Uh, Latinx to me doesn't really make sense. I'm gonna be honest with you. Personally, if I go back home to my abuela and I say, oh, we're Latinos, we're Latinas, whatever, they're gonna, she's gonna be like, no, like what, what is, what is that? You know what I mean? And I would say that Latinx, instead of saying Latin, is forceful. It makes people think. It is intentional. It is something that is critiquing the st current status quo. Well, on that note, uh, thank you so much for this discussion. I know it got heated. Um, I know that at the end of the day, we still may disagree on many things. We may now agree a little bit more, but more than anything, I'm, I'm grateful for you. Everyone here is, is, is very smart, and, and I, I'm just, thank you very much for this, for this discussion. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. Thank you.